Hello, hello, hello. I hope you are fine and you are doing well. I'm here with you today to accompany you during this period of uh, full moon in August. And for that, I'm going to explain in very simple way uh, what, what, in my point of view, is happening above in the sky, which, by the force of the law, <laughs> has an impact and a reflection into your own world. After this little explanation I'm going to offer to you, I'm going to uh, do for you one tirade with uh, the plants of the sacred plants of Druids and uh, with crystals, okay? Because all these are pattern of energy that are in us and so they are going to talk about you. Okay, so that after. So by the moment I'm going to explain you about this astral chart. And so the most significant for me is, uh, well, the sun is at the end of the last degrees of lion, uh, which is uh, symbolizing the, the values of the soul. So the sun starts to receive the, the impression of uh, Virgo, which is very much uh, a nurturing, nurturing and, and sweet energy. But well, depending of uh, other parameters. So, well, um, one of the things that is important for me is that we have in the, in the first house, which is the manifestation of the personality, we have uh, Uranus in Taurus, and so here is uh, maybe more, we have a tendency to be uh, quite, more, quite more rebel. Uh, we are not going to accept, uh, just by the acceptation, um, all imposition, or we are not in a mood to obey anyone, we are much more uh, in the mood to inquire about our own truth, our own feelings and our own thoughts. Um, Uranus is a planet that is pushing us to look inside us, to look for our, uh, our genuine thoughts, genuine truth. And uh, it's a scientific planet at the end. And so we, we need more, more signs. We need more signs and we are in the, in the, uh, in the pathway to find all the signs that we need to keep on doing, to keep on going in our pathway. The, the master of Taurus, which is Venus, is in fifth house in, uh, in Libra. And so this, that means that in, uh, in the middle of this uh, rebellion, inner rebellion, uh, you, you are going to, to try to find a way which is middle point and balance with some sweetness and sensibility. Uh, so there is a part of you that is listening something else, that is listening some kind of intuition and uh, is in good terms with uh, Saturn. So Saturn is in, uh, in Aquarius, which is offering service. So the first person you have to offer service is, <laughs> is your soul. And so how do you honor your soul? Your soul? Uh, how are you doing that you could glorify your soul and the divine in you? And so now you are much what you are mm, you have an uh, open, one little way to connect with uh, this sensibility, with that soul. Well, something uh, that I op also observe, which is interesting, is that I don't know if you, uh, if you have watched my, um, my video about astrological, sample, astrological explanation. Uh, I talk about uh, the dragon of the destiny, which is uh, Rahu and Ketu, which are uh, lunar points. So the, the north node and the south node of the moon. Uh, the north node is the head of the dragon, which is Rahu, and the tail of the dragon is the past, uh, our past from where we come, and then this is uh, Ketu. And so we have the the head of the drone, so there where uh, our destiny is pointing up, is in the first house, 
in uh, Gemini. So if you if you want if this is where you are pointing up now from where you come and what is the moment the moment to transcend something and to realize something it comes from your past which is in uh, Sagittarius in seventh house so if you want seventh house seventh house is uh, the house of association and uh, the partnership and uh, by no hazard you have uh, Juno, uh, which is an asteroid uh, that uh, talks about um, uh, the kind of partnership that we look for unconsciously. So Juno is in, uh, in this house of uh, partnership and association in Sagittarius. So Sagittarius, Juno in Sagittarius mark, uh, marks a tendency to, to, to match with someone who is uh, some stranger. Um, who comes from elsewhere and who is able to apport to yourself something new, something different, something uh, refreshing yourself and uh, as well as someone who is already into the search of uh, spiritual knowledge and uh, living already this kind of uh, lifestyle. So the fact that the Juno you know, is in seventh house and this is your past is that for you has a very meaningful meaning <laughs> a very meaningful uh, uh, weight into your concept of marriage and uh, commitment um, is like uh, very important and has an important weight into your beliefs system and into your way to look into your future so we so this is the past and the tail of the dragon and then we go to the future and the head of the dragon of the destiny which is to look for this partnership based in christic values so is to move from the need to i need this person to fulfill the kind of life that i'm dreaming I need this person to fulfill this empty space that by myself I cannot to release this person from my needs and to move towards one fulfillment, inner fulfillment about uh, all of this empty space that I have and that I'm just waiting that the other person can fulfill so it treats to realize that in myself I have all what I need and my complete state of myself where I am filled up with the divine now I can share this with this person that is sharing and vibrating and resonating with what I am also but with we are free from the need someone that by the way is not vibrating nice it's not vibrating nice in the heart it's more vibrating ugly in the plexus and like uh, like uh, heavy and then you move to uh, uh to uh, some energy that is uh, quite more light and nice it feels nice and it's a relationship based in, in detachment and freedom and unconditional love so here is a good moment to uh, to think about in in which in what parameters in which parameters are you basing your partnership what are you projecting into one person concerning your life and the fulfillment of uh, your goals your dreams why do you think that you are putting on the back of this person on the, all the weight of the responsibility that someone must give you something and must stay there for you you have to liberate in fact the, the in fact uh, more you do this so you project into someone something that you need and that you wish more you give power to this person and more you disempower yourself you have to empower yourself 
by realizing that opportunity is in you and it, it is uh, released by the divine and your connection to the divine and your soul. You cannot put the responsibility of your happiness and the fulfillment of your goals and dreams in one person back. You can't, because you will be forever unhappy and frustrated and uh, unsatisfied. So this is, this is the, the trip right now, to realize that all is in you. You are whole, you are holy. And so you have to move in this direction and detach maybe from some people that are uh, that have the power into you but because you have given this power to them unconsciously so you have to move into the partnership dynamic you have to change your mind right now gemini is a mental uh, is an error sign so mental also and you have to renovate your thoughts uh, according to more elevated uh, belief, belief system. You have to move. You have to move from where you are. Okay, so we have that. Uh, more, you have uh, uh, the asteroid uh, Ceres, which is the goddess of uh, of uh, uh, is a, a goddess uh, which is a nurturing, very nurturing. So you are going to be uh, nourished nourished and sustained by a sweet energy that put, pushed yourself toward this um, mood of inquiring yourself about yourself and your beliefs and how you can change. You are going to be sustained in that way. You are going to be sustained into this uh, evolution that you must face. Okay. Uh, then I have uh, the black moon the black moon in the second house in Gemini. So it's very interesting because uh, the black moon, the true Lilith in Gemini is telling about the honesty. How much honest are you with yourself? Uh, the second house is the, the house uh, about that is talking about how you gain your your money and how you create your abundance so in the way you are you creating in which you are creating your abundance are you happy and satisfied your way to create the money and the, the abundance that you need and that you actually are so it's coherent with your feelings is coherent with the, the person that you you yearn to be and you yearn to become. It treats about one coherence, a coherent behavior, about your inner and deepest feelings, your true thoughts about about yourself, about about the, the world, and the way you do things. So how much can you be honest with yourself? And also there is something important to see here is how much transparent can you be regarding uh, money? And because Gemini is yearning for a Christic relationship based in unconditional love and where you can release love without filters, so how much money is polluting and intoxicating the kind of love that you can deliver and the kind of love that you can share? Do you think that money, money is, uh, is more important to keep that love? So this is to be uh, thought, reflect, meditate it. Because maybe this is some kind of limitation that you have into your life, like uh, many others. And life, it treats finally to, uh, to, to overcome our own limits. And more and more, more you uh, transcend and overcome some limits, more you are able to see more limits. 
but you jump limits after limits quite more easily. So maybe there is something here with the money and stuff. Okay. Uh, what else? I see. I see the the wheel of fortune in uh, in Scorpio, in seven house. As as I told to you before, uh, the seven house is uh, the house of association and partnership. Um, what I'm feeling here is that you are also quite um, in relation with sex. Uh, it's like uh, uh, you need or you think that you need uh, or you have a need to uh, live some kind of passion, uh, some kind of extreme passion and maybe you have a tendency to um, to leave some kind of secret relationship because it must be intense, you know. So secret relationship, a hidden relationship, um, with a kind of practices that you you will never talk about because it it, it has it could have some sense of dirty dirtiness dirtiness, and so that is the wheel of fortune is here. Is because you can transcend because it's about transparency and honesty. The fact, transparency. The fact that are you able to talk openly what you do at every time with your money, with your love, with your sex. It is coherent. This is clean and shiny and fresh. So this is an opportunity to think about the meaning of sex. This is why I'm getting here. I don't know why. Um, which is the meaning of sex for you? And what is really bringing to you in the sexual act? What is for you a sexual relationship? And for you, in your understanding, what is happening during a sexual contact with someone? Because maybe the fact that you get new understanding and new signification for what sex is, it could change your mind and it could change your habits. And now that we have a planet like Uranus, um, which is um, leading us to, to inquire about ourselves and about to investigate all what we need to find our truth, maybe this is a good moment to try to study and investigate this uh, subject, this topic. Okay. What else I could see here? Um, oh yeah. So um, I'm I'm watching here one conjunction between Mars and Mercury in Virgo in fourth house. So Mars is a planet which is giving you the, the, the energy and the motivation to, to take action into something and some passion to be passionate in, in what, you, what you want to do. Mercury is a planet that is going to lead, lead, you, lead you towards change and to give you and to put your intelligence at the, at the service of the changes that you need to, to do in order to uh, to get some change or to get that that you want. So now in the house, in your, in the maybe it's also in your work, you are going to put in action some kind of strategies uh, that are more favorable for yourself, uh, more aligned, more coherent for who you become from the one you are becoming. Uh, and so this is an energy that is it can move quite quickly, and so you put yourself in action, actually. Um, yeah, in fact, uh, uh, regarding, concerning, and watching the kind of uh, relationship that Mars and Mercury have with Uranus, is telling to me that you are not going to hesitate and to think too much about the kind of things that you have to do. Let's say that uh, in this period uh, you get some kind of 
spontaneity, more spontaneity and more freshness um, to, to, to live, to decide, to take action, to move. It's more fresh. Okay? And it gives this, this consequence, it gives you an opportunity to move, to change, to evolve. And this is the goal because, uh, you know, this is your, uh, your Saturn in, in Aquarius, in Venus, in uh, Libra. This is giving justice for you. You, maybe with this movement that you are not thinking too much and you are just pushed to do, is to nourish your soul and is to uh, to. Uh, glorify your soul and to to get justice for yourself okay so you have a um, the moon in conjunction with uh, Jupiter in Aquarius so this is uh, the moon in Aquarius is canalizing all the originality all what is uh, genuine which is original and then you dare you dare to put in in, in action all this okay you have also the, uh, ast the asteroid uh, Chiron in um, Aries in 11th house. So that means that your soul has an, a hope to transcend certain gones, inner gones that are conditioning actually uh, all, uh, all your behavior, your vision into this world, uh, your thoughts, your belief system, so through moving and through allowing yourself to change and to do new action without not thinking too much without not kill the freshness of the spirit maybe you have a, a, an opportunity to change and and to to allow your soul express as it is well not so much uh, technicism uh, because there is a need to change and a need to be authentic and to uh, and to uh, stop to obey and to connect with something else. Okay, so this is the more important I can see in this uh, chart. There is more to say, but this is the more important. And so now, knowing this, um, I'm going also to tell you more. Uh, the full moon day, which is uh, the 22. August. Uh, we will have, um, the Earth will have a natural vibration which connects with the vibration of Lepidolite. Lepidolite is, um, is, the, is the crystal that leads us towards a conscious feeling, a conscious feeling. So all your feeling, uh, your feelings, your thoughts, you can, they appear into your mind. So you can be conscious about yourself. This is a crystal, there is, uh, behind this crystal, it is uh, Jupiterian energies. So is all this uh, process is just to, to make you move and evolve and to connect with something higher, because we are yearning for that, okay? But this is very, um, very good sign that something else is going to, ha to happen. Um, under Kabbalistic terms, uh, during this period of full moon, we are going to vibrate and to connect more easily with this right code, which is Aleph, Bav, Final, Mem. Um, and so this is a code that my Master of Kabbalah said, this is like uh, the mantra OM. This is very deep and very profound. And uh, we are not, I'm not going to speak about this right now, but Finally, and as we were saying that mm, the sun is just ending, a lion, which is the values of the soul. And so this is a God that yearned to, to, to have more, to give more. So with this code, when we vibrate this code, we find pleasure to give, by the pleasure to give unconditionally, with no expecting any return, any back. And so you want to improve this world. You want to nourish people around you. You want to be a, a sustain and, and a, a help uh, and a tool, a way 
uh, to make people move also. But to, to make people move and to help people move, you have to give yourself this opportunity first. You have to find to yourself the, the strength to move and to do the movement that you need to breathe and to allow your soul breath and a way in which you can be satisfied at the end of the day. So, by the way, this is, by the way, with this code, because it's OM, and OM is a very esoteric mantra that has four faces, four levels, it could be important that you focus into the quality of your sleep time. Because, you know, all world you are living in a conscious way, in this uh, physical reality, is coming from another level. But you are just, right now, you are the past of what has already happened in another state of your consciousness. And so, the more you can have um, a good sleep time, more you can connect with the seed form of your truth that is going to blossom into your reality. So it's important that you, you could get an, uh, an harmonious sleep time, that you feel good at the moment of your or to go to bed. You know, if you, if you, want, if you want some support and some help and some guidance to, about how to get this harmony, and this satisfaction uh, before go to bed, I encourage yourself to contact me because I can say many things and I can help you with some things. And so you can just contact me here and uh, we can talk pretty with uh, pleasure and um, quick joy. Okay. Okay, so now that I said all this, I'm going to do for you uh, one TH uh, utilizing all only. Uh, the oracle of sacred plants of treats, which is a wonderful oracle that I love, uh, as well as, as I said before to you, the oracle of crystals that are very much, uh, they are wonderful and uh, I love it because they are talking too much. Okay, so let me just shuffle the cards for you. And then I know that you know that just because of the fact that you are here paying attention to me, uh, it means that you are shuffling the cards with me and we are choosing together the cards that you need in order to get that word, that word, that idea that is uh, useful and, and can help you to understand and get clarity on the confirmation of something deeper inside yourself. This is the purpose of this reading, by the way. Okay. So let good mix these cards, and let's say that the spirit of truth, that by the way is symbolized by these uh, raven feeders, uh, we are going to get the divine message. Okay. So let's see. Uh -huh. So in this cut, we have. Uh, oh, let, let me check about the English uh, <laughs> English word. So you have the path path ball, and uh, let me check comfrey, path ball and comfrey. So the, these plants are telling to me that there is a transformation into your concept of partnership. We have talked about this. Uh, puffball is, um, is a mushroom. Um, mushrooms are already by itself very mysterious and very esoteric because they are growing into the shadow and they are transforming all the, um, all the uh, putrefaction all the dark matters into life and uh, they are renovating what seems to be death and they are uh, they are allowing life 
opens again through dead matter. So this is very mysterious. And when you connect with this energy of uh, mushrooms, you, you know that under the floor, they are connecting all the forest. So they are helping to you to get this understanding and experience of unity and connection. And this connection of holy connection is giving you the wholeness into yourself, which is precisely with this plant, which is comfrey. I want, want you from you that you stop to project into other person, into someone else, your needs, your happiness, uh, your fulfillment, your, your dreams, your goals. No one else is going to, to, to help you to, have, to, to get what you want. It's yourself, it's your power. The others can, can just add by and be attracted by energetic resonance, but all you need is inside yourself and you have to connect and to be whole into yourself. And this is the divine. This is a plant that is um, calling the fusion. But this fusion must be with the divine, with your soul, and to stop to project this fusion into someone else. You know, the kind of feeling when you are just uh, too much fu uh, fusioning with someone is that when this person is out, you, you feel that you cannot stay and that nothing makes sense. And that if it, if it is not with this person, what about my life? And so all is ruined. No, this is an illusion. And one belief system that you must change. And then you have to, to change this. You have to connect with the wholeness and uh, with the secret world, the mysterious world mushrooms want to show you. So allow some mystery. Allow and surrender that there is some things that you don't know. Uh, there is quite more to learn and to integrate and to accept that we are living, all of us, some kind of illusion concerning partnership and marriage and we are here for that, to just uh, a look. You know, this card, the next card is um, take your time. Take your time. Go in some retreat. Just take your time. Observe yourself. Heal yourself. You have to, you have to retreat in some point to, to, to be in contact with your own soul, to regulate and realize your, your mind and your emotion and to balance your heart. More you are rest, the more you rest and you take rest and you allow yourself to just relax and do nothing, more the divine inside yourself can do things for you and can organize everything to your favor. But if you are always just doing, doing this, that and trying to control and trying, this is life becomes a battle. And so it's difficult and is exhausting yourself now you need your time you know live life give to life an opportunity to organize everything because life is connected with this world where all is whole and holy and this life is inside you so live life relax take your time so let me see what comes I'm going to show you the cards, mm -hmm. but I'm going to finish with the Tirage of Crystals, okay? Look, already you know, you know what I'm getting here? One part of you feel that it does not matter how much you do and you do and you do and you make effort here and there for one person, the other person, and you know what? You feel like you are invisible and nobody is really really yourself is not really caring about what you do or you stop to do or you think well. so you are investing your energy and your time to some people in some situation and you know what they don't care you know this is how you feel i'm not saying that this is the truth this is what is some part of you is perceiving that after all you are putting your energies with a lot of devotion, let's say, for nothing. 
So in some moment you are going to say, I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know why the hell I'm just investing my time in my life for this. Because at the end, so what? No. Okay. These cards are also telling to me already <clears throat> that you have to focus, you have to relax, you know, the cards have said, you have to relax and don't think that the, the important things are the more visible things. <laughs> no. You know, all the great things are happening in silence and in the invisible plane. So in your daily life, you think that you are doing nothing just because there is not uh, very magnificent uh, events and because we are habituated to Hollywood films and all this and so there is nothing, you know, out of a common life and it seems to be so boring and so grey and so nothing extraordinary but at the end, when you have the correct sight, you observe the the extraordinary just in a in a sunset in the in the blossom of a flower in the fly of a butterfly you just find the wonderful thing and the miracle when you look into the into the eye of someone else it's a it's, it's something that you must learn to appreciate because life is not happening only in very dominated events, which could be spectacular events. No, life is happening at every breath, at every thought, at every person you cross, at every every ray of sun that warm your your body. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm so much a mystical sometimes. <laughs> so. And we are talking about this and look, I have in this cut, I have a lepidolite, which is very much what we have talked about before, and um, turquoise, uh, I'm not sure about a good pronunciation, turquoise. And so these two crystals are telling to me that, you know, you have to feel and to learn to feel the spirit of air. I was telling to you about the fly, about the butterfly, the birds in your garden, uh, a ray of light that comes through the window and warm your body and, you know, just go to nature, enjoy the elements, enjoy the natural elements, uh, sea, uh, mountain, plants, all the mineral kingdom, the, um, the animal kingdom and just be at every breath connect with the spirit of earth because earth at the end is your mother the earth can sustain you and hold you and nourish you it's like your mother in this you know when you were in the in the in the belly of your mother when you were um you were not born um you have everything you need you were just provided naturally meanwhile you were in the belly of your mother biological mother so why you think that things has changed? Things has changed, but are already the same. You are now living in the, in the belly of your mother earth. She knows you exist and she knows how to provide yourself with everything you need because she knows before you what you need. So connect with her and take care of her, communicate with her and just feel inside yourself that you are made of uh, its element. You are made of the element earth, fire, air, water and ether, exactly like the Mother Earth. So connect with Mother Earth through elements. And you are going to renovate yourself from inside, you know. So by the way, I have also a very wonderful, beautiful tantric practice to do to connect with the elements. So in case you want, just contact myself and I will do this for you with immense pleasure. Okay, so now let me just finish. Uh-huh, okay. <laughs> and at the back of the cards, you have her chimera diamond, which is unity, unity. You don't feel so much whole, huh? Uh, you need, you are called to, to, 
to reunify and unify yourself with that that it is, with life. Okay, so let me see. And again and again, this message, I don't know to whom I'm talking, to you, obviously, but you know, I don't, I don't know you, but the message are very clear. You lack, you lack uh, some kind of esteem and love for yourself. You, you, I was saying to you before that you have the perception to be invisible and not appreciated, but you are not appreciating yourself. You have not still discovered your value and your worth, and you must do this. Because when you don't, I promise to you, if you don't recognize and you don't connect with your worth and your value, don't worry, life is going to put into your life someone that is going to, 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 to try to put you down and to dump your world down. You are going to suffer so much that you are going to say, I cannot, this is, I die or I survive, but I have to do. So you are going to suffer because you are going to surround yourself with people that is going to hurt you and to take the power over you because you are not in power. The only form of power that is real and is uh, worth it is love. Because love, like uh, the mystic poets has said, from very very long time is love is the last reality that exists and so this is your last reality you have to connect with this your last source of life and love and light and so you have to discover your value and your worth because you you don't appreciate yourself this is this is like a row that is the truth and we are all, we are all in some level disconnected and not appreciated and not even knowing our value and we are ev every one of us in this pathway, you know. So then you have a sulfur and uh, how to say, uh, let me, let me consult my list uh, to tell you, uh, lycopodium, voilà, lycopodium. So this is a little plant that is telling to you, you know, the things, the important things are not the most magnificent and more spectacular things. Put your soul and put your energy into little things because they, they are important. Because if you put all what you are, all your love, all your, all your principles and all your values into one little thing, you are creating a, an impulse. And an impulse that is growing and growing with very uh, with the very little action that you do day after day. This is changing your karma because every action, even if little and not bad because of your mind, is not important. It is because through action you you change your aura. Your aura. Uh, you change your energetic field. So it is important. And you know what? It is said that in the way that you do one thing, you do everything. So you cannot pretend to be uh, lovely and nurturing and to be the center and the pillar of someone when you don't care about the, and you don't love and you don't take care about the little things. And that is also is just a very, very simple example. Um, the fact that how, how you tidy up your room, how you treat your, your clothes, how can you treat your things, how you treat your animals, your plants, how you, because in this way you do everything, how you talk to your friends, how you talk to your parents, how you talk to yourself. So put all what you are in action, in the very little detail and action, in your daily life. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, um, in the outcome, the possible out outcome that you are going to have is silver with the uh, lierre. Just give me one minute. Lierre. Uh, I don't know if it's a good pronunciation. Igi edera. Igi edera. 
this is some kind of uh, this is a plant that is climbing the wall of uh, of uh, houses and so is some kind of destructive plants but that the uh, in the other phase this plant is nurturing with uh, the fruits of this uh, uh, the fruits of this plant is nurturing a lot of little animal and they are little animal insects little insects and birds you know this is nurturing but it's also destructing all what is uh, avoiding to move forward and to keep on climbing and you know she is just following the moon and the moon is the intuition the aspiration the mystery we were saying before about the mushroom that you have to connect with it, the mystery of the life and to leave yourself be guided and move with faith and not with sight. You understand this the difference? Sometimes we don't know, we just don't know, but we are guided and pushed by some inner force to move in that way. So you don't see, but you have a faith. So learn to move with faith and not with sight. And so be inspired. Let yourself be inspired by the world of mystery, by things that you don't know and are like magical. And uh, pay attention to synchronicity. And so, like this plant, just which is, by the way, a plant that connects with uh, the goddess, so the mother earth, hmm? um, you have to learn to destroy and to, and to put into the trash all what is avoiding to you to move forward. This is, you have to transform ancient energy in order to, to move forward and to get higher quality in life, higher emotion, uh, happiness, peace, abundance, in, in all sense, abundance in love, in material finances, and be free and uh, out, uh, overcome limits. So dare to do things, dare to think different and trash, put into the trash all what is obsolete and old and is not useful for you. In order to be nurturing, you have to connect with your intuition and your higher aspiration. Okay. And even the silver, silver is um, uh, the lunar path, the lunar path, so the lunar path. So this is the goddess, and this is wisdom, you know. This is with wisdom, and this is a crystal that is connecting with uh, Venus, la, the planet Venus, um, which is looking for harmony, beauty, uh, peace, and love, and is initiatic, you know. So this is all what I can say for you by now. It has been a little more longer than I pretend. But I hope that something that I said, one word, one message has resonated into your heart and help you to something. Uh, don't hesitate to just contact me here. I'm here to talk with you, to, to have FaceTime and to talk together. Okay, so have a beautiful, beautiful full moon time and uh, know that I love you and kisses. <laughs>